You're watching Mirror Now. I'm Amita Balachandra. Let's take a look at the top headlines. Government starts the phasing out of subsidies on LPG. Subsidized LPG prices hiked by 4 rupees every month. All subsidies to be eliminated by March next year. Karnataka wing of AIADMK writes to State Chief Minister demands a media gag on former DIG prisons and whistleblower D. Rupa. Mumbai University sets itself a new deadline for announcement of results, says the evaluation of answer sheets will be completed by the 5th of August. And is the deadly internet game Blue Whale Challenge responsible for the death of a 14-year-old boy in Mumbai? Friends claim the teenager was playing the game. No suicide note recovered. उन लोगों को पर्यायी घर देने के लिए काटकोपर वेस्ट में उसी क्षेत्र में एसआरए के जो पीएपी है उसका वितरण का आदेश आज दिया है। Housing Minister Prakash Mehta issues orders to provide alternative accommodation to survivors of Mumbai building collapse. Survivors will be shifted to a slum rehabilitation building in Ghatkopar. And brazen hooliganism caught on tape. TRS leader's son assaults toll plaza staff, threatens to stab another employee. All this over a toll fare of 30 rupees. And India's big win over radicalism forces gunned down Lashkar Chief Commander Abu Dujana during encounter in Palwama. A massive victory for our forces. Straight up to our top story, prices of cooking gas cylinders will be increased on a monthly basis. The government has ordered state-run gas companies to hike subsidized LPG prices by 4 rupees every month. This is being done to eventually eliminate all the subsidies by March next year. The Rajya Sabha, in the meantime, had to be adjourned after opposition raised the issue. We expected this. There's nothing new. All that eyewash and that thing that uh, surrender your LPG, give this subsidy to the poor. My sisters in the villages are now cooking without uh, smoke in their eyes. See, okay, now we just go back to those practices of finding coal and uh, lakdi to cook our food. And uh, LP anyway, we can't afford it. Very soon, we can't even afford to cook. What <laughs> are थोड़ा सा कम खा लेंगे सब्जी नहीं बनाएंगे भाई रोटी खा लेंगे और क्या करेंगे अब अच्छा नहीं है हम सरकार तक पहुंच नहीं सकते क्या करेंगे उसका ये अच्छे दिन के निशानी है हमारे घर में तो बहुत असर पड़ेगा हमारा आदमी बीमार है मैं औरत अकेली कमाने वाली हूं हमारा कोई बच्चा नहीं है लड़का जो कमा के देगा बता हम कहां जाएंगे हम कोटी में बर्तन मांज के हम खा रहे हैं हैं और उसमें बिजली का बिल भी हमारा बढ़ गया था और सिलेंडर का भी हम बढ़ेगा तो हम गरीब कहां जाएंगे राशन भी बंद कर दिया परेशानी है बजट सारा नुकसान इसी में है आदमी जितना जो कमाता है अगर इसी में देगा तो उसको कुछ तो मिलेगा नहीं इसमें तो भोजन करा गया हमारे कुछ नहीं करा अच्छे दिन आएंगे अच्छे दिन अच्छे दिन तो हमने देखने अभी तक in the meantime, Union Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said the subsidy won't be cut down and will only be rationalized. He says uproar over the price hike is in fact baseless. With corresponding increase of other parts of the country, thereafter, the price will be periodically revised based on the increase in the paying capacity as reflected in the rising per capita income. With the Purani Nirneko Hamlogone, Jab Jime Bari Samali, Do Vishape Jordia, energy affordability, energy accessibility, energy security, Hamlogonki, Sarkarki, Raniti, Vijiliki, energy ho, ya cooking gas ho. मोदी जी की सरकार आने वक्त देश में 14 करोड़ एलपीजी कनेक्शन था जो आज बढ़के 21 करोड़ हो चुका है। We are strongly condemning this. You see, this is the government which conducted a big campaign under Prime Minister with Prime Minister's photographs all over the country, under the slogan of "Give it up." 
they were telling those who could afford to buy cylinders without subsidy to give it up so that the poor can be given subsidized cylinders. Now they have started increasing the price of uh, cylinders so that the subsidy itself can be wiped out. That means every month four rupees is going to go on till the subsidy is wiped out. That means all this was a total joke. The poor now have to pay the full non-subsidized amount for a gas cylinder. So this is a very, very heavy burden on the people. And this is something that is not acceptable. Government must immediately re reverse this decision. In fact, Milan joins us now to get us more details. Milan, LPG uh, prices hiked by 4 rupees per month. Tell us how uh, this will impact monthly household expense. Certainly, the rise of uh, LPG cylinder prices by 4 rupees every month is definitely going to impact the household budget. Uh, currently, uh, the subsidized uh, LPG cylinder is uh, costing somewhere around 447 rupees and uh, the non-subsidized is already costing about more than 500 rupees and uh, an increase in 4 rupees will, uh, you know, uh, make people aware of how much, uh, uh, you know, cylinder gas they are using for cooking and uh, when we talk about uh, what the Prime Minister has already mentioned he did say that we want to do away with uh, subsidies on LPG which uh, you know uh, there was a campaign by the BJP as well where a lot of people were told to give up their subsidies but uh, considering that uh, a family of four uh, would use uh, uh, you know an, an, an LPG cylinder uh, uh, 14 kgs from anywhere about a month uh, in about 25 days and uh, after 25 days you will have to buy another LPG cylinder and uh, also the uh, amount uh, is uh, 12 cylinders a family is allowed and uh, this will definitely uh, make them wonder as to whether we should be uh, saving on cooking gas or whether we should be uh, looking at uh, you know methods to cook and you know changing it because it's going to be expensive for uh, a family who uh, cannot even uh, you know uh, who doesn't earn more than 20 to 25 thousand a month uh, and it is certainly going to be a burden on their expenditure especially after the GST has come in uh, with the many goods and service uh, services uh, which have become expensive we were also talking about how household commodities have become expensive certain products are now expensive including uh, you know basic commodities like biscuits and etc. So uh, a hike in the LPG gas cylinder is definitely going to set the citizens back and put them on a back foot and uh, it's not going to augur too well uh, you know, for the government as well. Also, Milan, the Petroleum Minister has clarified that uh, subsidies will only be rationalised but the fear is that subsidies will eventually be eliminated. Yes, that's exactly what the Petroleum Minister has said, that uh, the subsidies will be eventually eliminated and they are uh, uh, targeting to do this till next year in March, uh, which is why they have proposed to increase the prices of LPG by 4 rupees a month. But uh, in the long run, it is going to definitely have a negative impact on the citizens and uh, the massive population. Around 2 crore people have already uh, started using non-subsidized LPG and uh the, it will shake up the household budgets to such an extent that people will have to rejig and do a lot of thought, uh, put a lot of thought into uh, what goes into their kitchen and uh, uh, it's going to impact uh, the families and especially it's, it's the woman who actually looks after the kitchen in most Indian households and uh, she will have to uh, rejig her family budget and uh, uh, figure out whether she wants to uh, spend all the money in the household budget on an LPG cylinder or uh, budget for other household necessity, uh, food necessity items in the house. So definitely the citizens uh, will be putting a thought into it and uh, we must see uh, further whether uh, the government is going to be able to achieve what it wants to achieve by uh, increasing the LPG rates by 4 rupees every month. Back to you. LPG prices hiked by 4 rupees every month. Milan, thank you so much for getting us those details. Moving on from that story now, Mumbai University has failed to deliver yet again. The university has given itself a deadline of the 5th of August to announce the results. Remember, the fate of 17 lakh students hangs in the balance and sources say the delay may cause the university's Vice-Chancellor Sanjay Deshmukh his job.
we have able to finalize the agency on 2nd of May. Uh, perhaps the manual assessment would have started from 4th of March. So this two months delay uh, in fixing agencies and then the infrastructure uh, of the agency was in place, etc. And then the second reason was the uh, customization of the software uh, used for the assessment after a scanned file goes to the teacher. So the uh, necessity required in the uh, alteration required in the software that was not there and this 31st uh, July is not a deadline that if the result is not declared today it will not be declared. The results are in processes. In, in the hurry we don't want to declare a result in a mess form. We want to declare in a proper form with a proper uh, checking and uh, uh, within uh, four or five days say max to max by 5th August each and every result will be declared. In the meantime, U.S. Sena members staged a protest demanding resignation of the Vice Chancellor and the Education Minister. So, uh, absolutely, university is not going to uh, meet the 5th August of deadline because we, right now we spoke to him and he admitted that 5th August is also not possible for us to declare the whole results. Mm -hmm. Law papers will be declared, uh, exam results will be declared, it will take 15th August mm -hmm. and then the mark sheet will be processed. So, this is absolutely administrative failure mm -hmm. and it is really surprising that uh, the attitude of the VC. No, is very adamant to not to accept the mistakes. All the students, lakhs of students of Mumbai University have no longer belief in any of the assurances that the Vice Chancellor or the Education Minister gives anymore. That is why our prime demand and U.S. Sena President Aditya Ji Thakre's prime demand today was that the Vice Chancellor should accept responsibility for this whole mess and he should resign. That's where I'm currently standing at the Mumbai University campus here in Kalina, where today a number of uh, members of the Yuva Sena have turned up in protest of the delay that has happened in the declaration of results of all streams um, at the Mumbai University today. And they are protesting and demanding the resignation of not just the Vice Chancellor, but also the Education Minister for the State, Vinod Tavre. And today, the core committee members of the Yuva Sena met up with the Vice Chancellor and they have discussed a number of points. And one of the major things that they have discussed in this meeting today is that they want and they are demanding the resignation of the Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor himself, apart from uh, Vinod Tavde's resignation. Apart from this, they are, have also demanded an urgent inquiry and probe in this whole matter as to why, despite giving a deadline of 31st of July, why have they extended the deadline to 5th of August? As, an, as according to them, a number of students who wish to apply for further studies, not just across the country, but also abroad, are suffering on account of this. They are also stating that the re-evaluation fees uh, that these students might have to go through after the results are declared need to be waived off and they have demanded this to the Vice Chancellor as well. So moving forward, we will see how soon will the Mumbai University act as tomorrow it is being stated that the Vice Chancellor will be holding a press conference and uh, deciding and uh, speaking upon all these issues that have been surrounding the university city campus and the city of Mumbai um, in these many months as there has been a major delay when it comes to the declaration of these results directly affecting the students here in Mumbai. This is Richard Sharma for Mirror Now Mumbai. Also in the news now, a deadly internet game called the Blue Whale Challenge has reportedly claimed the life of a teenager in the Andheri area of Mumbai. The 14-year-old boy committed suicide by jumping off the terrace of a seven-storey building. No suicide note has been recovered and his parents claim that there was no indication that the child was depressed. However, the deceased had reportedly told his friends in school that he had been playing the blue whale game and he would not make it to school the next day. Here's what the police had to say. We have also known that today's children are playing this blue whale game. Blue whale game. Blue whale game. Like Pokemon Chadda, it is a blue whale game. Hai. O गेम के एडिक्ट हो गई है गए हैं और वो गेम में जैसे इंस्ट्रक्शंस आते हैं वैसे फॉलो कर, करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो वो एंगल भी हम लोग चालू है वो एंगल से इंक्वायरी चालू है now, while cops are yet to determine what drove the boy to commit suicide, the testimony of his friends corroborate the grotesque nature 
of the game the blue whale challenge is a suicide game run on social media that originated in russia it consists of a series of tasks assigned to the players during a 50 day period and the final challenge requires the player to end their life aditya tiwari gets us more details A 14-year-old boy allegedly committed suicide by jumping from a fifth floor of Imperial High Building located in Andheri East. The Meghwari police has registered an ADR but they are suspecting and probing the matter and what we have picked from them, they are saying that this case is related to the suicide game which is known as Blue Whale uh, Challenge Game. This is the first that which occurred on uh, Saturday evening. A 14-year-old boy from the fifth floor uh, jumped and uh, died of this uh, game. Uh, as per the police, what they have uh, picking up from the friends, they are saying that this boy was being associated with this game from uh, since, and this game has a 50 stage, and the last stage is uh, is by uh, doing suicide. So the police has seized the laptops and the mobile phone of the of the deceased, and now investigating the matter. Has they uh, uh, suspect that many of his friends may be playing this uh, suicide game. Aditya Tiwari, Mirana, Mumbai. Moving on now, a 40-year-old woman was stabbed to death in front of her daughter in South Delhi's Mubarakpur area. According to the police, the woman's live-in partner killed her in a fit of rage. Apurva Sridhar files this report. In a shocking incident, a 40-year-old woman was stabbed to death by an unidentified man in South Delhi area. In fact, this entire incident took place on Monday evening at 6 p.m. And I'm right now standing at the very location where this incident took place. Uh, the woman was going home uh, along with her daughter. And this is the area, as you can see, I'm standing right outside uh, gate number one of Tiagrat Stadium here in Kotla Mubarakpur area of South Delhi, where this man, who was later identified as the victim's live-in partner, had come and stabbed her mother multiple times here in this very area, following which she was immediately rushed to the Ames Hospital where she was declared brought dead. Now the police have already arrested the accused in this case and according to the police, uh, the woman and uh, the accused were in a living relationship for a long time and there were several quarrels that they had, following which the accused in a fit of rage stabbed the woman multiple times leading to her death. In New Delhi, this is Apurva Shridhar for Mirror Now. On to a continued focus now, IPS officer D. Rupa is in the eye of a fresh storm. First she was shunted out, then targeted. And now people who stand exposed because of her are seeking to silence her. Karnataka unit of AIADMK has now written to CM Sidramaya asking them to restrain the officer from speaking to the media. Further, the party also accused her of trying to gain publicity through media and sought appropriate departmental action against her. All this because she blew the lid off the VVIP perks given to AIADMK leader Sasikala at Bengaluru's Agrahara Jail. First, it was the Karnataka-led uh, Congress government where they had shunted out D. Rupa for all her investigation as far as the VVIP treatment given to uh, VK Sasikala in the jail premise. Uh, then we also saw Hachin Satyanarayana Rao also issuing a letter to her asking her to apologize in the public. Now, the latest development that we are tracking at this point in time is that AIA DMK uh, Secretary for Karnataka, Pugarendi, he has also written a letter to Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya to ensure or prohibit D. Rupa from speaking to media as far as uh, the preferential treatment given to VK Sasikala is concerned. In fact, uh, his advocate Krishnapan had written this letter uh, to Chief Minister Siddharamaya. Now, the contents of this particular letter clearly states that she should not uh, go to media or f speak any more further as far as uh, the preferential treatment given to VK Sasikala is concerned. Now, remember, in fact, uh, D. Rupa had made allegations. She, in fact, uh, blew the lid uh, of as, as far as the irregularities in the Parapanagrahara jail is concerned, be it the drug abuse, the drug inflow within the central jail premise, or uh, be it the two crore bribe case where two crore, it is alleged that two crore bribe was paid to HN Satyanarayana Rao, who in turn gave VK Sasikala preferential treatment, like the 5 BHK, where she had uh, five rooms uh, to herself, including a kitchen, a special kitchen was given to her. Now, this angle is right now being probed by the Karnataka government where 
they had appointed a retired IAS officer Vinay Kumar. We also hear from the sources from the government that this particular report is ready. The interim report is ready, which will be soon submitted to the Karnataka government. Now, coming back to this particular letter written to Chief Minister Siddharamaya, looks like that uh, D. Rupa will continue to uh, stick to her stand, what she is right now saying about all the allegations made against HN Satya Narayana Rao. No, no matter what, she will stick to her stand. And that is her final report is what she's telling us. Let's now also take a look at what else is making news in a shocking incident from Rajasthan. A shocking video of an old man molesting a five-year-old girl has gone viral. The accused has arrested by uh, the police under POXO Act. Flood hit Jalawar has lost a community hall to up. The party is preparing to enter Rajasthan politics and has set up an office inside a government community hall. Protests erupted against AAP for using a government property for political purposes. Pakistani authorities have extended the ex detention of Hafiz Saeed for two months. The counter-terrorism department of Pakistan believed that release of Hafiz will spread chaos in the city. Hafiz and his aides had challenged their detention in Lahore High Court, but the case is still pending. Rajasthan's Food and Supplies Minister was injured in an accident that took place during late hours in Kota when a buffalo bumped into the minister's car. The minister's personal assistant died and the driver was seriously injured in the accident. The government has submitted the requisite opening note and paperwork related to Vijay Malya's extradition case to Malya's legal team. The next hearing is set to be held on the 14th of September. The business tycoon is sought by Indian authorities for allegedly defaulting on several bank loans. Union Minister Ramda Zathavle has stirred up another controversy. Speaking at an event, the minister advised transgender persons to not wear saris and then immediately clarified saying that it was just a suggestion and they always have the freedom to wear whatever they want. With the newly formed NDA government looking to launch a fresh probe into the alleged soil scam at the Sanjay Gandhi Biological Park in Patna, Trouble seems to be mounting for Tej Pratap Yadav. Tej Pratap is accused of having played a key role in the scam during his tenure as Environment and Forest Minister. Most wanted terrorists in Kashmir, Abu Dujana, was gunned down in an encounter in Palwama earlier today. Dujana was the mastermind of the Pampur attacks. He also had a bounty of 8 lakh rupees on his head. Moving on now, do the families of our elected representatives believe that they are above the law? That's a question we're asking. TRS MP Lakshmi Prasanna's son was caught on camera assaulting the staff of a toll plaza with his friends. The incident happened at Kattal Toll Plaza. You can see the gang barging into the toll plaza office and attacking the staff. They even attempted to stab one of the employees. A case now has been registered against five men including the Neta's son. The red beacon seems to have gone, but the arrogance still seems to be there. This incident happened at around 9 p.m. last night at Kartal Toll, uh, which is uh, under the Samshabad limit of Hyderabad city. What exactly happened was uh, this TRS reader's son, whose name is Manish Gaud, and five other friends of his were returning after a party uh, from the Sri Salem Highway at the toll. They refused to pay a toll of 30 rupees and got into an altercation with uh, the staff of the toll booth. And immediately an altercation broke out, an argument broke out. Uh, this uh, TRS leader's son got out, Manish got out, uh, took out a sword. And on camera, you can see a video being taken because it was apparently the CCTV uh, there recorded it. Uh, but this video that you're seeing is uh, one that was taken by the employee of the toll booth. Immediately an altercation broke, broke out. And you can see the car actually passing at very high speed. And then Manish and his friends 
fled from the spot immediately, uh, leaving the injured man there. And now we're hearing the man is being uh, recovered at a hospital. And a case of attempt to murder under Section 307 has been booked against Manish and his friends. What's interesting to note is that Manish's father is a senior TRS leader uh, from LB Nagar and his mother is the corporator, again a TRS leader, from BN Reddy Nagar constituency. Both TRS leaders, their son and his friends involved in a, uh, in a, in a, in a fight like this which was caught on camera. In other news, now the Delhi government stopped grants to 28 colleges of Delhi University as they failed to form governing bodies out of the 28 will uh, colleges. 12 are fully funded by the government, while the remaining 16 are partially funded. Without this funding, the fully funded colleges might have to close down. The move puts the future of around 50,000 students at stake. The university students are protesting against this move. Students of Delhi University are out on the streets today protesting against the decision of the Education Minister of the Delhi Government, Manish Sisodia, to cut grants to over 28 colleges that are part of the Delhi University. In fact, 12 of these colleges are 100% funded by the Delhi Government and will have to face shutdown. Colleges like Deen Deal uh, will have to shut down because their salaries and construction work, water bills and electricity bills are also paid by the Delhi government. Uh, Mr. Manish Sisodia has taken his decision citing irregularities and corruption in forming governing bodies in each of these colleges. He says that uh, the Delhi government will not allow irregularities and corruption to take place on the Delhi government funds in the name of education. In New Delhi, this is Milan Sharma for Mirror Now. This decision by Delhi government to stop the grants uh, is uh, a way of protest by the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister uh, because the governing bodies are uh, not being uh, cleared from the Executive Council for last almost a uh, couple of months. But there is a reason for it and uh, the reason is uh, that in some of the governing bodies uh, a large number of members are from the same background like four or five educationists in some governing body. This is what I have been told by one of the uh, members of the Executive Council. Idea normally is that uh, to have a wider representation in each governing body, somebody from field of accounts, somebody from field of art and culture, somebody from field of science, somebody from education, somebody from law. So a wide variety is normally kept. But maybe due to uh, lack of uh, understanding or whatever, in some governing bodies, four or five members are from the same field mm -hmm. and there is no representation of other fields. So that perhaps is the reason that uh, the Executive Council decided to have a re-look into the names and uh, recommend to the Delhi government that they should balance them out. Delhi Vishwavidyalaya mein aur kai sari problem hai aapne unko kyun nahi abhi tak target kiya Delhi Vishwavidyalaya mein hostel nahi ban raha Delhi Vishwavidyalaya ke chhatron ki unki seatein nahi bad rahi unko to aapne koi reason nahi bataya unke liye koi kaam nahi kiya lekin naye college kholne ki bajaye un 12 college ko bilkul band karne ki aaj naumat aa chuki hai jinko aap 100% fund karti hai Delhi Vishwavidyalaya ek aisa vishwavidyalaya hai is prestigious university hai hamare India ki jisme ki alag alag states se students padhne aate hain aur yahan pe bahut se ummeedein rakh kar aate hain aur un sabhi chhatr छात्र छात्राओं के साथ जो खिलवाड़ करी जा रही है विद्यार्थी परिषद इसके टोटली अगेंस्ट है जब ये दिल्ली सर।